Hi, today we are going to take a look at this vintage aircraft instrument. Oh, this is an air attack computer. It was installed in a military aircraft. I don't know which one. Okay, so the reference is the CPU 46. Okay, so we can see that uh, we have two transducers. On the left, uh, we have the altitude transducer. And the output is a dual synchro. On the right, uh, there is a transducer. The output is a logarithm of QC. And this is actually the impact pressure. The impact pressure is the difference between the total pressure, which is on the pitot tube, and the static pressure. Uh, the logarithm permits to compute easily the ratio between the impact pressure QC and the static pressure, okay, which permits to get access to the Mach number. On the front, uh, there are several connectors. So we have, of course, uh, the two input pressures here, static and pitot. Uh, this connector here is probably for the power supply. And uh, there are two other connectors. There is here a house totalizer. There are two fuses. Okay, so this thing was manufactured by Colsman Instrument. First, let's see what is inside. And after, I will try to get it to work. Okay, look at that. Another beautiful electromechanical computer. Let's have a look first on the electronic side. The electronic side is limited okay, to these uh, two servo amplifiers here. Okay, because we have two motors. Okay, we can see one motor here for the speed and uh, another motor here okay, for the servo control of the altitude. Okay, we can see that there is a torque limiter here. We can see also this thing here which permits to have a correction of the altitude here using these little screws here. This permits to move a little bit this lever. The rotation of this lever permits to rotate this second lever here. And we can see that we have a different shawl here. We can see this different shawl. Okay, so this permits to add a correction okay, to the output here. So this is a correction of altitude. And there is a spring here which permits to have a small torque on that gear. So this permits to compensate the backlash. Okay, so it seems that we have also an altitude encoder here. Yeah, because effectively it is written here, there is a an altitude encoding. Okay, so you can see that we have two other compensation cams here. This cam is linked to another differential. Here there is an error signal monitor. And here uh, this should be a transformer. Actually this is a DC power supply. So here there is a small uh, printed circuit board. Uh, there is a a relay here, okay, a few passive parts. Uh, so the input of that thing is 115 volts AC. Okay, so there is a transformer inside. Uh, okay. Uh, this is one servo amplifier. Okay, so we can see the pin out of this servo amplifier. Uh, there is one input here which is uh, connected uh, normally uh, to the rotor 
of a control transformer, okay, for the servo control loop. And uh, we have two outputs here. These two outputs are connected uh, to the windings of an AC motor. Okay, so there are two windings actually with the middle point. Okay, normally we have a capacitor connected between these two outputs here. And these two outputs are out of phase. And of course there is a phase shift of 90 degrees. So this permits uh, the rotation of the AC motor. Okay, and uh, this is uh, the error signal monitor. So we can see we have uh, two input signals. The QC signal here and uh, the altitude signal. Okay, and the output uh, here is probably connected to external relay. Okay, so the goal of the device is to amplify uh, both signals here. And uh, there is a comparison okay, with the threshold. We can see that there are two adjustments which permit probably to adjust the gain of each amplifier. On the electronic side, we can see uh, here several diodes and a few resistors. So this circuit is used for the dual synchro system. Okay, so I will do the reverse engineering of this part here. A pair of diodes is used to disable one synchro when the signal is too low. So therefore only the fine synchro is used in that case. And this is a classic circuit for a dual synchro. I did the complete reverse engineering of this unit. You can see the complete electromechanical diagram on the screen. Let's see first the dual synchro system for the altitude. We have here the altitude transducer. There are two control transformers inside. One is a coarse synchro. The variation is 19,000 feet for 36 degrees. And the second one is a fine synchro. 1,000 feet for 36 degrees. These two control transformers are connected to two synchro transmitters. We can see here. The coarse synchro transmitter is linked mechanically to the servo motor using these two gear trains. The ratio here is the same than the ratio of these two control transformers inside the transducer. The fine synchro here is connected directly to the motor. The goal of a dual synchro system is to have a good accuracy of the positioning of the shaft. So let's see how this thing works. We can see that the rotor of the coarse synchro is connected the servo amplifier using these two diodes back to back here. Therefore, when the error signal is above 1.5 volt approximately, these two diodes will be conductive. Therefore, the error signal is given by the coarse synchro only because the impedance here is much lower than these two resistors in series here. This error signal is amplified and fed to the servo motor here, which will reduce the error voltage on that point. When the error voltage is below 1.5 volt approximately peak to peak, these two diodes are off. Therefore, the servo control uses now only the fine synchro. This error signal is amplified and fed to the motor. So the motor rotates until this error signal here is null. In that case, we have a very good accuracy on the positioning of the shaft here. On the left here, we have the output of the fine synchro. That is to say 10,000 feet per turn. The shaft here is linked to a differential. The second input of the differential is that cam here. This cam permits to adjust the altitude by step of 2,000 feet. We can see that we have 45 screws here. Okay, the marking here corresponds to the altitude. 5 corresponds to 50,000 feet. This shaft here is linked to this gear train. Okay, so therefore we have uh, here a variation of 90,000 feet per turn, which corresponds uh, to the complete rotation of that cam here. The variation of that lever here is transmitted to this second lever. This shaft here corresponds to the second input of the differential. So therefore, as the output here, uh, we have the fine synchro plus a correction of altitude. So we can see that there is another cam here, which permits the second correction. So this correction is fixed. So we can see this cam here, it is underneath this gear. So it is difficult to see, but we can see this lever here, which is this one. The variation here is amplified using this gear train here. Okay, so that gear is a partial gear, okay, because the variation here is small. 
I assume that this output here is an image of the logarithm of the static pressure. Okay, so the goal actually of that system is to compensate the static port according to the Mach number. Okay, so this output here is used for the computation of the Mach number. This shaft corresponds to the correction for the static port. This is the static source error correction, SSEC. The correction is fed to this third differential gear, D1 here. Okay, so the output here corresponds to the altitude which is corrected for the static source error correction. Okay, we can see on that image an example of the static port. So a static port is never totally static because there are some turbulences in the input here of the static port. We can see on that graph three different corrections for three different aircrafts. So we can see that depending on the aircraft, the correction is different. So the correction is several hundred feet, as you can see. Therefore, on that shaft, we have actually the logarithm of the static pressure which is corrected. So we can see that this shaft is fed to another correction which is performed by this cam here. I assume that this cam permits to convert the logarithm of the static pressure into an altitude in feet here. And this is the output shaft of that unit. Okay, so let's see how the static source error correction is performed. I assume that this shaft corresponds to an image of the logarithm of the static pressure, as we have seen. This shaft is linked to a differential synchro. We can see in the middle here the transducer of the logarithm of the impact pressure. We have here the servo amplifier, okay, and we have here a synchro transmitter. Okay, so let's see how this thing works. So this shaft is the output of that system. Let's call it out. The rotor of this synchro transmitter is connected to a reference voltage here, 115 volts. So that means that the electrical angle of that synchro transmitter is actually out. So here there is a differential synchro. So differential synchro permits uh, to compute the difference or a sum of uh, two different things. The first thing is that input here, which is actually the same signals, which is actually the angle out here. So the shaft corresponds to the logarithm of the static pressure. This is an assumption. So therefore here we have the sum of these two angles, that is to say out plus log of PS. Okay, and uh, this uh, synchro is connected okay, to the control transformer of the transducer. The rotor of the transducer is connected okay, to the servo amplifier. So how works the transducer? For a given dynamic pressure, there is actually only one uh, electrical angle here, which permits to have zero on the rotor of that control transformer. So actually we have here the logarithm of the dynamic pressure okay, when this thing is stabilized. Actually the logarithm of the dynamic pressure here equals the output angle here plus the logarithm of PS. So therefore we can compute the output angle. Okay, so we can see that the output angle here corresponds to the logarithm of the ratio of the dynamic pressure divided by the static pressure. So this ratio permits to get access to the Mach number. We can see that we have here the logarithm of the impact pressure divided by the static pressure. So this is the correction for the static port. So we can see that this shaft here is linked to this cam. We can see that on that cam we have actually the reference of the aircraft. This cam permits here to give the correction according to the Mach number. So if we want to use this unit in different aircraft, another cam should be used here. We have here the output shaft. It corresponds to the fine synchro, 10,000 feet per turn here. There are two synchro transmitters linked to this shaft. One synchro at least should be connected to the altimeter on the cockpit of the aircraft. The altimeter should be compatible with this unit, that is to say, using a fine synchro with 10,000 feet per turn. We can see here the digitizer. There are 11 bits. The resolution is 100 feet. 
the output here is a GAM code. It is close to a gray code. Only one bit is changed when there is a change of 100 feet of altitude. We can see also that the return line of the encoder here is connected to a relay. So therefore, the relay should be activated in order to get access to the GAM code. The relay is connected to the servo monitor. There are two inputs. The signal is connected to the fine control transformer of the altitude. And the second one is connected to the control transformer of the dynamic pressure here. In normal mode, these two signals are very small, close to zero. So when these two signals are low, below a given value, therefore the relay is activated. And this permits to activate the digitizer. This permits also to activate the flag of the altimeter using the contacts of the relay.